Hi, this is Richard Byrne at freetech4teachers.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at National Geographic's MapMaker Interactive tool. This is a nice alternative to using Google's My Maps tool. Uh, it doesn't require kids to log in in order to get started using it. Uh, and in fact, there are some features they can use without ever having to create an account whatsoever. Now, let's take a look at some of the features here in the MapMaker Interactive. So first of all, we have a number of base maps from which we can choose, and we can say gray map, terrain map, satellite, or we can use a Nat Geo map. Now over here on the left-hand side of the screen, we have this little grid icon, and we can turn on lat latitude and longitude lines and positioning. We can adjust the interval, so we can go down to intervals of five or all the way up to intervals of 70. So I'll sc scroll back there and now we're down to intervals of 5 again. And now we can go ahead and start to add some elements to this map. So let's scroll in. And one of the easy ways to add elements to the map is to explore the layers. Now when we click on layers, we can choose from a number of categories take a look at human populations and find different maps about populations about food or climate and weather we could add climate zones for example just click and add that it's like done over here now we have climate zones now we can have adjust the transparency of the climate zones so we can see how that changes there now, if there's any data added to this layer, it'll appear in that data tab. There currently isn't any. So let's go ahead and delete that layer now. If we want to add individual place marks, uh, much like you can do in Google Maps, we'll go over here and hit the place mark icon. We'll just use icon number one. There are a lot of icons you can pick from. Uh, we'll just use Saren number one here and I'll put it right on the state of Maine where I live. Now if I want to edit this icon I'm going to go over here and click click on the edit button. You'll see that's now highlighted. Now I'll double click on it we can change the color and change the font. We can also add links here so I'm going to add in a link and this link will be called uh, Fly Fishing in Maine. And I'm going to put in a video. So I have a video there. I'm going to add that in. Uh, a tour of places to fish in Maine. Now you can also add an image, if you, but the image does have to be hosted online somewhere. So perhaps in your Flickr account or your Picasso web album or something to that effect. Uh, now let's go ahead and save this. And now we have my marker in the map. Now some of the other things we can do here, we can simply write text on top of a place. So we might put it down here and say Connecticut is divided by the Connecticut River. It is also divided by Red Sox and Yankees fans. Now that's not a great label because it's hard to read so let's go back in and click on the edit button. We'll double click that section and we'll adjust the color. All right, so purple is probably not going to work out so well on our map so let's maybe use a darker font Let's adjust the stroke width and the font size and go up to 20. And so it's a bit bigger there. And again, we can adjust the markers and the measurements if we want to. We can go back in and change the color. We'll adjust my transparency. You'll notice as I do that, 
the font begins to change a bit. And we'll save that. All right, so we can also go ahead and do some drawings on top of the map. Now we can do a freehand drawing and just do some measurement as we go. Again, we can add a label. If we wanted to label that, we can go ahead and click Edit Layers and select this section. And we can adjust that as we see fit. Perhaps we'll make that outline red. Again, we can adjust the font size and the stroke width as well. We also have some pre-made polygons we can draw in. So if you want to highlight a certain area and write about that layer or that area, I should say, go in and double click on that. And we can go in and change that information. Now let's go ahead and wrap up this map and look at how we can save the map itself. So there are a couple of things we can do. If you want to save it and retain the interactive elements or the multimedia elements like your pictures and your videos, uh, you're going to click the save button here and you will have to enter a map title description and an email address so that you have a link for your map at all times. Uh, let's call it sample map. And I'll put in an email address. And you'll see now I have a new URL just for that map. But if you want to skip putting in an email address, perhaps your students made maps where they did not um, include any video or images, you could simply say print the map. And you'll be able to get the map as you see here and print it out. If I want to reset this map. I can do so and start all over again. Now there are just a couple other quick little features to point out in here. I'll scroll in a bit more on an area. There we are in the United States. And if I wanted to add some more information, I can go ahead and turn on the country flags and facts. I'll change the borders around that. Change the fill around the borders. You can see how that has just been changed. But what this allows me to do by turning on the country flags and facts, is we double click on the map and we'll instantly see, okay, information about the United States and we can learn more about it. Uh, for students, they can also go up and double click on Canada. They learn more about Canada, get some quick facts about Canada. Nice little feature included in the Map Maker Interactive. So that's National, Geogra National Geographic's Map Maker Interactive. And for more tips and tricks and tools like this, please check out freetech4teachers.com.